So I'm Evan Burton with the Anderson Street Project, and we are sitting with the incomparable, <laughs> the I'm about to cuss his ass out, Duran Bernard. How was that that we just sat through? Listen. Can you like really tell us? Like, I mean, there was just so much. I mean, you started off with Phyllis Hyman. You, you sang Honey Molasses, a song that Jill doesn't even sing. You sang Philly's Favorite Couple, Kendra the Family Fall, and Brown Sugar. Like, this was probably one of the, the best Philly shows by a non Philly artist I've ever seen. Wow. Well, um, this is my first tour, so um, each city, each set is slightly different, and it's custom for that specific city. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what that was. Like what, talk about the love for Philly's music scene, because everybody knows that Philly is like a cornerstone in the program of R&B. Can you tell us, like, maybe even some artists from Philly that you grew up listening to and are really impacted by? I was introduced to Jill Scott when I was 11 years old, and then my dad, who was an audio engineer, ended up doing that tour, that 826 plus, okay. and I remember sitting on the side of the stage, and I listened to her sing. Like, and I was blown away. And that was back when Vivian Green was singing background for her. She yes. had the big hair. And Carol Redden. Do yeah. Carol? I don't remember Carol. I just, I just, in my mind, I remember Vivian leaning down with her big hair and kissing me on my cheek before oh my they gosh. went on stage. And I remember that. And I sat on the side of the stage and I was in awe at, at 11. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, so her alone. And then, of course, you know, music, soul, children. You know, uh, Kendrick, I love, like, I just love all of them. And of course, D'Angelo, which, by the way, I've called um, Fly on the Wall, Brown Sugar's nephew. So. And anybody who's seen Erica in the last five years knows that you're a, a core piece of the show now. You know, Erica's going to give you the mic, you're going to snatch every root of our head off. And I've never seen Erica in concert. That was like, and, and you did mention that, mention that to me. I've been singing like, background for her for five years. I have yet to be on the other side of the barricade. Right. How? <laughs> Again, like, can you tell us how? I just, I've never, I just, I think at the time, I don't know, she never, she never came to Cleveland. The last time she came to Cleveland, I was like 11. So, and I didn't even, you know, it's just, yeah. What is it like touring with Erica? You never get bored. I never get bored. I can tell. Um, it's, it's just, you know what? And I told her, like, recent, on my birthday, because I had a gig on my birthday in, in Mobile, Alabama. And I was telling her about the tour coming up. And I was like, you know what? Even if I was able to do my own thing full time, I was like, I would still want to gig with her. And she was like, I dread the day you have to leave, but I understand. And I was like, I'm gonna make it work is 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 stretch as far as I can because I love gigging with her. Um, she's nurturing, she's a mother, she's like a best friend, she's a mentor. Yeah. So, and how do you construct your harmonies? It, it seems like the harmonies alone in your songs are art. I well doing theater, doing musical theater, and um, doing pieces that, you know, contain like choirs and things. Um, and also growing up listening to Kirk Franklin. Yeah. My dad's, one of my dad's best friends is Richard Smallwood. Oh, yeah. Oh. So like, yeah, like he was a, like my dad was a pallbearer at Richard's oh. funeral. So like, that's how long they've known each other. Okay. And um, so like just all those different, and you know, growing up in church, I did not get my vocal in, uh, inspiration from church specifically. Spiritually, um, I was influenced by church, but as I grew up, uh, I was listening to artists like Enya, Enigma, um, some jazz, some gospel, Mariah, Michael, mm -hmm. Whitney, Sade, mm -hmm. and then as I got older, you know, TLC, Lauryn yes. Hill, Brandy, you know, folks like that. But I also listened to, um, the bush. Like that's my shit. Yes. <laughs> so um a little bit of share. Like I mean there's yeah. just I mean everything. So how do you choose your cover songs that you do on YouTube? But you know, that's how you kind of got to playing the thing. Anytime I listen to a song, number one, it has to make me want to sing. Mm. Number one. So 
there will be things that I hear that I wish were in the song. And what makes you want to sing? What, whatever the music is, however it makes me feel, you know. So um, if it makes me like the mute, however the vibe is, whatever the feel is. And at first I didn't like No Angel. Uh, when I first heard that, I'm like, yeah. Uh -huh. But it grew on me, and I was like, I have to, I have to do this. Yeah. But um, no, so I, I, at first of all, it has to make me feel good, mm -hmm. and also sometimes it can come with what the vet Singletary used to say is feeding the beast. Mm -hmm. So doing stuff that I know people want to hear me sing. Just tell us about your new project. What I was going to title mm -hmm. it. It was originally going to be self-titled, but Soundcheck is pretty much a, a body of work that I feel like people would have walked in on mm -hmm. as a sound check. Mm -hmm. And the band is tight, you know, we're, 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 we're rehearsed. And they're like, yeah, she know, and I'm like, well, if you thought the sound check was dope, just wait till the show starts. The right. show will be the actual album I'm going to drop next year. I'm expressing my sense of humor on the EP, um, you know, different dimensions of my sexuality and, you know, my character and just who I am. There's a song uh, that closes out the project called Insufficient, and I know everybody was wondering why I took all my old music down. Insufficient is about my old music. It's not about a person. Even though I was, during the second verse, I might have been um, touching on my last relationship and then a friendship that ended uh, a few years ago. But for the most part, I was just talking about my old music and how when I listen to it, it makes me cringe. I don't feel proud of it because it's a constant reminder of why I'm not where I am right now. And I was trying to figure out why am I not where I feel I should be? Like, it's not that I can't sing, what's the problem? And so when somebody finally told me what it was and how I can fix that, I was like, okay, I don't want anybody introducing any of my old stuff to them. Now, maybe later after the album comes out, mm -hmm. a couple years, I'm gonna, all the old music is gonna resurface okay. exclusively on Bandcamp. Okay. And then, um, right. now how can people find you? How can you just DuranBernard.com. D-U-R-A-N-D-B-E-R-N-A-R-R.com has everything, SoundCloud, Twitter, Facebook, um, Instagram, uh, latest show updates, um, all that stuff.
I see them happen. 